Hey guys, welcome to the Anthony Brown Show. I'm just leaving, getting off from work, and something was kind of on my spirit. I just wanted to share with you guys for a moment. Something that um, was kind of halfway discussed today at work, and that is. I had a few coworkers that had been on the job for 10 plus years and yet today just like any other day they were complaining about the job Oh my God, I hate this job. Oh my God, I'm sick of these people. Oh my God, I hate management. Oh my God, the company don't treat you right. Oh my God, they're cutting hours. Oh, I mean, it was always something. I mean, every time you turn around, they have something to complain about. Now, whether their um, complaints were valid or not, doesn't matter. The point I'm making is, you applied for that job, which means when you put in the application, I would hope that you somewhat knew what you were getting yourself into prior to applying. Because remember, you applied. No one came to your door, knocking door to door saying, hey, do you want a job? Mm -mm. You came there saying, Hey, I want to work. And in your orientation, interview, all that, it was spilled out to you what the job requirements were, what was expected of you, what the company does, what they do, what they've done, where they're going, where they're headed, their vision, and all that. And you said, I accept. You signed on the dotted line, they told you what the pay was. You know, it, even in the performance reviews, you knew what the pay structure was, how the reviews go, approximately how much money you're gonna get each time. Because like I said, these are in, individuals that have been with the company for 10 plus years. They didn't just start with the company. They've been there. These are what we call the seasoned vets. So the point I'm making is, why are you still complaining after 10 years? Okay, so my thing is also is, what are you passionate about? Because maybe that place of employment, maybe, maybe you've outgrown it, or the company have outgrown you. You ever thought of that? That's a, a strong person possibility that that may have happened. Either you've outgrown the company or the company have outgrown you, and that's no longer your passion. A great person once said to me, that when you're born, God plants your passion in you. So, so whatever it is that, that you're destined to do was placed in you at birth. You just gotta find out what your passion is. And this is gonna, how you're gonna, something that's gonna help you find what your passion is and what it is that you're passionate about and what you're destined to do or should be doing. When you wake up in the morning and that one thing that's your passion that you can't get it off of your mind, you're constantly thinking about it. That one thing that you would possibly do even if no one paid you, simply because you like it, you enjoy it, it feels good, it, it, it brings you happiness, it brings you joy. That, that one thing that you could possibly do even with your eyes closed. That, that one thing that regardless of the amount of money it brought you whether little or whether great you will still do it because that's your passion that's something you enjoy that one thing that you could probably teach a class in and um 
you know, and, and everyone would understand so well, and, and you would have ease in teaching the class. You gotta look look inside your heart, look deep inside, look deep within, and find that one thing that you enjoy doing, that one thing that you constantly talk about, that one thing that you talked about when you were five, that one thing you talked about when you were 10, 15, 20, now age 25, every now and then you still talk about it. If that one thing, you will keep bringing it up and keep talking about it, perhaps that's your passion. And I don't proclaim to be this old holy roller, spiritual person, um, but the Bible speaks something about your gifts, your gifts finding room for you or not having room for you or your gifts will find you or whatever. Your gift is your passion. That's your that's that thing that God planted in you. Your gift, your passion. That one thing, that thing that you're so gifted at. Like I said, you could do it and do it so well. Example. A friend of mine She's an ex-military young lady. She, she graduated from the, the um, army, came home, and she met me, and she kept saying she likes taking pictures as a hobby. She enjoys it, and she talked about it all the time. I told her, why don't you try doing that as a freelance photographer? Start off part-time, doing it here and there, seeing if you can make some money. Now she's one of the hottest photographers in demand in South Florida. Her specialty is weddings. Weddings, baby showers, and birthday parties. Mostly weddings. She's making a fortune taking pictures, doing what she loves. Another friend of mine, I said, um, he posted a picture one day on Facebook on social media of some food he cooked on the grill. It looked so good, I thought he was selling dinners. So I inboxed him, you know, how much is a plate? I want a plate. He said he's not selling plates, it was just something he cooked for you know, him and his family and everything, and he just wanted to show it off. I said, well, sell me a plate anyway. We're friends, we've been knowing each other, you know, 10 plus years, our birthday's the same, you know, I want to buy a plate. He said, well, come over and just get a plate. I'll give you a plate, you know what I'm saying? I'm not even going to charge you. I came and got a plate. I tell you, not only did the food look good and pictures, it was so delicious. I suggested to him, you enjoy cooking? Yeah. I said, okay. Why don't you try next weekend barbecuing, cooking, grilling, and selling dinners from your home? And just to see where it goes. A year later, one of the best cooks and catering service in the West Palm Beach, Palm Beach Gardens, Rivera Beach area. Um, another friend of mine, a teenager. Everybody know that they're like craze going on with the slime. This girl, I believe, is 13 or 14. She knows how to make the slime and stuff, and, and she makes it perfect. Not where it's sticking to your skin or your clothes, and she makes it perfect. I suggested to her, why don't you, do, you know, sell, sell it? You know, sell, you know, cater to the kids, do side shows. She thought about it, she tried it. 13, 14 year old child. She's not making a fortune, of course, because she still has school. But she's making good money playing with the kids, which is what kids do. Having the kids involved in making their own slime with her supplies and charging them. She teaches the class, and the kids make slime, which is what they want to play in anyway. And she charges them. 
another friend of mine bakes cupcakes. Something as simple as a cupcake. But for some reason, the frosting kept melting whenever she would try to deliver her cupcakes to people. So she figured this isn't for her. I gave her the idea, put the cupcakes in a jar. Cupcake filling, frosting. Cupcake filling, frosting. Cupcake filling, frosting until you fill the jar. She started a business, cupcakes in a jar. Makes a fortune. Again, her gift, her passion. It brought her profits. So that's all I'm saying today to each and every one of you. If you're sick of your job, stop complaining. Just find out what your gifts are, what's your passion, and go after it. We all have a gift. We all have a passion. It's that thing that we were born with from day one. Find your passion, your gift, and start making some money. Doing what you love best. It all starts with you. And as I often end most, in most of my videos, grind until you shine. Thank you for spending some time with me. See you guys on the next video. Take care.